My lesbian friends got me a Timex as a gift. I think they misunderstood when I said I want to watch. <laughs> what up, YouTube? Scott here. Thanks again for visiting the channel. As always, I appreciate it. If this is your first time to the channel, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoy the content. Uh, and today I'm doing a quick review on the Hinderer Ranch Bowie. This is an absolutely amazing fixed blade knife. I only own one fixed blade. Uh, it took me a long time to decide which one I wanted. I kind of went back and forth between the Hinderer um, uh, Ranch Bowie and the... Demco Free Rain, which is another fantastic fixed blade knife. I just didn't like the sheath on that one very much. I like the sheath on this one a lot, lot better. Uh, it is a sheath, not a lanyard, as I said in my, in my unboxing, because I'm an idiot. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and get started on this guy. Let's do it up. Uh, so first, I'm going to cover the sheath. Uh, this is an absolutely, you can see, it's just beautiful leather work. Uh, you've got a couple of uh, brass or copper rivets here. I'm guessing those are brass uh, with uh, the stitching holding everything together all the way back down and up to the other side. Uh, you have this beautiful Hinderer logo uh, pressed onto the leather, which looks absolutely fantastic. Now, this leather is handmade, uh, custom handmade leather uh, sheaths for Rick Hinderer's knives. Uh, through a company, I believe, in North Carolina. I, I can't be sure. I don't believe they're in Ohio, but this is a custom Amish-made uh, leather sheath that, that he has handmade just for his knives. Uh, and they also have their logo on the back here. It's uh, w, uh, WH, whatever the hell that is. And then it says handcrafted in the USA, which goes right along with uh, Rick Hinderer's knives and everything that he does in the ranch and, and you know, uh, all the knives that he sends out to distributors to sell and stuff like that. So everything is handcrafted in America. Uh, now with Hick with Hick Renders with Hick Renders <laughs> with Rick Hinderer's knives, uh, his uh, his hardware uh, that's all made uh, in house. Uh, everything that he makes that he sends out into the uh, the community uh, is made in house in America in Ohio at his ranch. Uh, so you're you're talking about. Uh, High-end production knives, uh, folding knives, mostly the po most popular ones are the XM18, the XM24. Uh, the Project X has become very famous lately. Uh, but and also he's got two other the other two models that he makes, which are the uh, the Eclipse and the Jurassic, uh, which those are fantastic. Uh, they've, there's also a few other models, the uh, half track and the full track. The full track's been discontinued for quite some time, but he's just coming out with more of those. Uh, but anyway, we're here to talk about his fixed blades, uh, which, again, I, I never really had much interest in fixed blades up until a few years ago. Uh, sometime after I started the channel, I decided I wanted to start showing some fl fixed blades on the channel, but... Uh, I, I just, I don't have people sending me stuff yet, uh, much. There's a few people that send me things to look at, but, uh, right now it's just a few, a few people. So I don't really have anybody to send me fixed blades. So I have to really buy my own stuff. And this was the only one I was really able or willing to spend my money on. Uh, yes, this is a very expensive knife. Uh, this knife comes in, uh, at around $400. It retails for 390 and after taxes and shipping and all that stuff, depending on where you get it, it's going to end up costing you a little bit more than $400. But believe me, as the thumbnail says, this knife is worth every single penny. It's a knife that you're going to have for the rest of your life. Uh, as long as you have this blade coated, uh, if you live in an area where corrosion is a problem for you, then that won't be an issue. Uh, and uh, I don't know if they sell this knife in S45 or not, but I know that the one that, that I bought is, uh, is in S is is S <laughs> is in CPM 3V steel, which I've wanted 3V steel in my collection for quite some time. It's a fantastic uh, hard use uh, tool steel, and um, the uh, the the fact that it's in 3V absolutely is I, I love that. Uh, it's 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 this one of the selling points for this knife for me. Uh, also, the fact that it's coated. Uh, is another selling point for me because I can't have 3V uh, where I live in Pennsylvania that's not coated. It will corrode almost almost immediately as soon as you take it out of the packaging. Uh, so anyway, we are currently looking at a, a 10 and a half inch knife overall with a five inch blade uh, and a 5.5 inch handle. There's really not much else to say for measurements. Uh, you have about a, five, let's see here, uh, about a 4.5, five 4.6 inch cutting edge 
uh, thanks to this very generous forward finger choil here, which I absolutely love. Uh, I love the fact that you're able to choke up on this knife. That was one of the selling points for the fixed blade that I wanted to get, was I wanted something you could really choke up on and really get a handle on. Uh, in case you have to do any serious cutting or anything like that. Now, I have done some serious cutting with this knife, uh, but I wasn't really able to record any of it. We still got quite a bit of snow here uh, where I live, so I didn't want I didn't want to drop my phone and and just do all kinds of stupid shit outside with this knife uh, while trying to record it uh, because I I I, I might have lost my phone that way. Uh, so, <coughs> excuse me, I didn't record any of that, uh, but I can tell you this thing can take whatever you throw at it. Believe me, it's a, it's a full tang knife, as you can see. So you're just talking about one solid piece of steel that goes all the way down through the butt of the knife, uh, the pommel, whatever you want to call that. Uh, you've also got some uh, micarta scales here, which now these are a little bit darker than they were when I got them. Uh, that's not the color of the micarta that they send you. The color of the, this is not brown micarta, this is natural micarta. So uh, I don't really like, I like the feel and I like everything about natural micarta. Uh, but it's a little pale, uh, so I just threw some oil on it uh, to darken up the knife a little bit more and to make it look a little bit better. It really brings out uh, the grain or you know how that how that canvas was laid out uh, when they uh, made the micarta and then added that epoxy resin to it and then they ground it down and they just made a it's perfectly shaped. I mean you've got this palm you this palm swell here, uh, which makes this knife very comfortable in the hand. Uh, you've got some pretty aggressive jimping, but not sharp jimping. Uh, it's not it's not so sharp that it hurts your hand or anything like that, uh, but it's plenty to give you some reasonable traction, especially when you're choked up on this knife. Uh, you can see there's plenty of handles sticking out the back uh, with that five inch, five and a half inch handle, uh, and then you've got this five inch long blade here. Uh, you've got a clip point blade or Bowie, as you, if you want to call it that. Uh, you've got a swedge that starts about halfway down the blade on the on the spine and then comes all the way down towards the tip. Uh, and you've also got a flat, uh, which carries out to about 55 or 60 percent the uh, the length of the blade. Uh, you've got this nice long flat, and then you've got a, a belly here, which comes out to this very good piercing tip. Uh, and then you've got the finger guard here, uh, just in case you are holding the knife in a standard hammer grip. Uh, I've used this for batoning. Uh, I stabbed it into some trees. I, I cut a small uh, branch in half with it. Uh, and, and when I was done, it was all marked up. Uh, but with this coating, uh, this DLC coating, I was able to just wipe those marks off. Uh, you know, I didn't go through any nails or staples or anything like that, which could scratch this uh, surface, but uh, I just went through wood and it went through it uh, with no problems whatsoever, especially when I was batoning. Uh, this blade is very, very sharp. I don't know if I can show you that right off the bat, um, but it wants to bite the paper. Uh, it's it's 187 thousandths on the, uh, the spine thickness there. Uh, so even though that this is almost a full flat grind, uh, it's still a pretty thick blade, uh, but you can see that this, uh, this blade wants to, to kind of bite into this material here. And every once in a while, I can get a full cut on it, or I can do it like that. Uh, but yeah, this this it kind of tears a little bit through the paper. Uh, but this is a very thick knife, so that's not exactly uh, surprising to me. Um, it did come with a very good factory edge. Uh, you can see that there's no uh, real uh, burrs or anything on here. Uh, there's no real edges where the the blade is uh, uh, bent or nicked or anything like that. Uh, it's a very good factory edge, in my opinion, especially if you're going to be using this guy for a lot of hard work. Uh, I don't necessarily know that a paper test says much about this knife. Uh, it's supposed to be a little bit of a bruiser. Um, and, you know, there's there's just not much of this knife that you, not much with this knife that you can't do. Uh, it's an absolutely perfect uh, everyday carry uh, fixed blade knife. It's a little bit bigger, but it's not too, too big. Uh, I actually do carry this with me everywhere I go where I'm able to wear jeans. If I'm going out in like basketball shorts or something like that, obviously I'm not going to have this on my hip. Uh, but it's a, it's a very comfortable knife to use. It's a very nut comfortable knife to put back into the sheath. Now that I have, why did I, why did I lock that? Sorry. Um, now that I have the sheath kind of broken in, uh, it slides right down into the sheath where it's supposed to. Uh, and then you can snap on these, um, the strap here uh, and it's very secure it's not going anywhere at all there's no shaking there's no rubbing there's no anything like that uh, it's very very secure inside this sheath and as you can see they kind of molded it to the shape of the knife so that it would fit perfectly in there now as you can see I've got some scuffs and scrapes on the sheath already 
Um, but that's okay. I don't want this to stay pristine. I want this to kind of have some kind of a patina on it at some point uh, after I've carried it for a couple of years. Uh, but yeah, this knife is absolutely fantastic. What else haven't I told you about this guy? Let's get a weight on it. Let's see how that looks. Um, oh, I skipped the uh, I skipped the size comparisons. That's okay. I'll go back to that in just a minute here. Uh, but let me turn this on, make sure it's zeroed out. Just make sure you guys can see it. Uh, so I believe this guy is supposed to be 10 and a half ounces outside of the sheath. Okay, so 10.6. It's a little bit, tiny bit heavier than it is on the on the website. Uh, but it's also supposed to be 15 and a half ounces with the sheath. Uh, so let's see how that looks. 14.3. So that's a little more than an ounce off from what the website says it's supposed to be with the sheath on. Uh, so according to the website, with the sheath on, it's supposed to weigh 15 and a half ounces, which that's fine by me. I don't mind if it's a little bit lighter. Um, that's that's not a problem at all. Um, let's get some size comparisons out of the way so we can say that we did that. I'm going to throw this down here. Okay. So first things first, we've got the Ontario Rat 1, which is going to be just a little bit smaller than this guy. Let's see. We'll line them up right here. There we go. All right, so this uh, the Rat Model 1 is going to be a little bit shorter uh, than the Ranch Bowie, and obviously the Rat Model 2 is going to be dwarfed uh, by the Ranch Bowie, much smaller knife. Uh, next on the list is the RSK MK1 G2, uh, Ritter Hogue answer to the Benchmade Griptilian. Uh, that's obviously going to be a little bit shorter uh, than the Ranch Bowie, and the AD20.5 is also going to be quite a bit shorter. Uh, than the Ranch Bowie. Um, I'm doing three spider codes this time just because I want to give you uh, an, an, ex an example of a, a larger knife compared to this guy. Uh, but we'll start with the Paramilitary 2, which is obviously going to be quite a bit smaller than the Ranch Bowie. Uh, the Paramilitary, I'm sorry, the Para 3, which is going to be dwarfed by the Ranch Bowie. And I'm also going to put up here uh, the knife I've been keeping in my toolbox lately uh, in my truck, and that is the the Military 2, the Spyderco Military 2, which is going to be the longer knife, still a little bit shorter than the Ranch Bowie, uh, but this is a fantastic size comparison knife for this knife, in my opinion. I'm not going to do uh, carry profile just because you carry this thing in a sheath, so it doesn't really matter how it fits in the pocket. Uh, and last but not least, I'm going to compare this guy to my other hinderers, uh, the Hinder XM24, uh, which is going to be a little bit shorter than the Ranch Bowie. Uh, and the XM18, which is going to be quite a bit shorter than the Ranch Bowie. Uh, so now you can see three knives coming from Rick Hinderer's shop compared against each other. Uh, obviously the XM18 is the smallest, the 24 is the medium, and the Ranch Bowie is the largest knife, obviously that one being the fixed blade. So, what else is there to say about this guy? Now, I got my calipers fixed. Yay! That's exciting. <laughs> so, I don't have to use those shitty ones anymore. Uh, and I also put some tape. I don't know if I can show you or not. I put some tape on the the uh, the, the jaws here, whatever the hell you want to call it, so that won't scratch up my knives. Uh, but I did make sure that the battery was in and it was reading properly. So, this is zeroed good. We're going to should be at 187 thousandths. That's pretty damn close, 187 thousandths right there. Yeah, 186.5, 188. Uh, okay, yeah, so 187 thousandths for this knife. Uh, and that is, uh, like I said, that blade stock thickness carries all the way out to the butt of the knife, uh, giving you a full tang knife. Now, the reason that's important, obviously, is if you have uh, like a big blade here with just like a spike that carries out this way, and then they wrap it in whatever the hell they wrap it in, and then try to set it in there with glue and everything, it's it's obviously going to be a little bit less, uh, less sturdy, less substantial uh, than something that does have a full tang handle on it. Um, what else is there to tell you about this guy? It cuts... It cuts very, very well, uh, especially when it comes to hard use stuff. Uh, it's got a nice little lanyard hole here in the back. With uh, with a fixed blade, I don't, you know, I don't dispute the need for a lanyard. I probably still won't put one on here, but uh, I understand why. If you have a, a large fixed blade, uh, why you would want to have a lanyard on that guy, just in case you are uh, out bushcrafting or whatever the hell you want to call it, uh, and your knife falls out of your sheath or whatever. Uh, it's nice to have that lanyard tied to your your belt loop. Um, you've also got the uh, hinder, hinderer symbol here, you've got the USA here, and CPM3V 
uh, right there. Now the lettering here normally is written black on their blades, but this one is silver. It's probably just because this is the battle black uh, finish on the blade. Uh, so they probably couldn't contrast that with the black very well. Uh, now you can see that you just have some stainless steel flathead screws here. I did take those out when I took the scales apart uh, to put some oil on them so that I could make sure that it's nice and even across the uh, the entire scale. Uh, but as you can see, these are all are, these are also some pretty some pretty thick scales. Uh, let me see if I can find out how thick these things actually are at the thickest point. Uh, so it looks like no, I'm not going to be able to do that. But they're, they're pretty damn thick. I'd say those are more than 187 thousandths, probably 190 or maybe 200 thousandths on those scales at the thickest parts. Uh, so it, it really fills out the hand very, very well, even uh, when you're choked up uh, and when you're choked back all the way, or I'm sorry, when you're holding it in the standard hammer grip, it fills out your hand very, very well. It's a very comfortable knife to use. And I really think that he would have done a disservice if he would have made these scales uh, any thicker I'm sorry, any thinner than they actually are. Uh, I wouldn't have minded them actually being a little bit thicker, but that's just my preference. I have big, huge bear paws for hands. Uh, so that's just my opinion. Um, what else is there to tell you about this, guys? Well, when, when spring gets here, I'll do some work outside with it and I'll, I'll record it and maybe upload that for you guys so you can see how well this guy does. But I absolutely love this knife for sure. Uh, this is a knife that'll carry with me every day for the rest of my life. I'm happy to have it in my collection. And I, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, you know what to do. Please like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate that. And stay up, y'all. Take it easy. Bye.